So yes, now I would like to introduce Dr. Imran Rafi, who also is a joint RCGP clinical champion for genomics, but has a very long-standing interest in genetics and genomics, and also plays various other significant roles within the RCGP, and is also undergoing the M oh, sorry has completed the MSc in genomic medicine course. Apologies, Imran. I shall hand you over to Imran. Thank you, Jean. Um, so I'd like to talk about um, non-invasive prenatal testing, and I think it serves as a really good exemplar of how genomic technology may be applied within the NHS. Um, I should just declare that I um, actually sit on the education subgroup for uh, Public Health England Fetal Anomaly Screening Programme, and I'm also on the Rare Diseases Advisory Group for NHS England. So non-invasive prenatal testing, or NIPT, um, is going to be part of the NHS um, antenatal pathway. Um, but as GPs and family practitioners, we will also be um, um, come across women who will undergo perhaps private testing, um, and I think it'd be quite important in terms of how we deal with this. So what is um, the non-invasive prenatal testing, and how does it fit into the screening pathway? So the UK National Screening Committee have recommended introducing NIPT to the Fetal Anomaly Screening Pathway. And the programme is being um, rolled out um, during um, 2018, and there will be a strong evaluative rollout um, through, through the process. So this will be an option for those women who've got a higher chance, which is described as 1 in 2 to 1 in 50, of having a baby with Down syndrome, Edwards syndrome, or Pateau syndrome. Um, or otherwise known as trisomy 21, trisomy 18, and trisomy 13. And this is where um, um, the testing will occur following combined or quadruple screening. So it will not be offered as a standalone test outside of those um, screening tests. So how does it work? Well, during pregnancy, the, the placenta sheds fetal DNA into the maternal drug bloodstream so that the maternal blood contains a mixture of fetal and maternal DNA, and you will have what's called cell-free fetal DNA within the, within the maternal blood. So what is cell-free fetal DNA? So these are short DNA fragments which are representative of the fetal, fetal genotype. And as the pregnancy de um, develops, it could constitute um, from 4 to 20% of the total circulating cell-free DNA. So the proportion increases as the gestation develops. In terms of how it's um, assessed and evaluated, um, a sample is taken from the pregnant mother or pregnant woman um, to enable analysis of the total free um, DNA. So genomic technology now makes it possible to look at cell-free fetal DNA and look at changes in the amount that might be circulating in the mother's blood. And a really interesting point about this is that the cell-free fetal DNA remains in maternal circulation for only a few hours after each pregnancy. So that cell-free fetal DNA is specific to that pregnancy. So this just reiterates the difference between combined and quadruple testing, which is testing that is analysing the mother's own hormonal levels, um, as well as the use of nuchal ultrasound scan, um, against NIPT analysis, which is analysis of placental DNA in the maternal blood. How will we get reports and what, what will the report tell us? Well, the Fetal Anomaly Screening Programme um, will report based on chance. So there will either be a higher chance or a lower chance for the conditions being screened for. A lower chance means that it's unlikely that the baby has Downs, Edwards, or Pateau syndrome. A higher chance means that there's a higher chance for each of those syndromes. What won't be reported would be the sex of the baby or any other incidental findings. So let's just consider this scenario. Um, Sophie, who's 27, is pregnant. Um, she's accessed first trimester combined screening at 11 weeks. No anomalies were seen on ultrasound scan, but she's got a higher chance based on the first trimester combined screening of one in five. She decides to have NIPT, and following the test, she's contacted by the screening midwife, who tells her that she's got a higher chance NIPT result for Edwards or Pateau syndrome. Her next choice um, could be to have chorionic villa sampling to confirm the result. She may, however, decide that she doesn't want to have the procedure and continue with the pregnancy, or she could request a termination of pregnancy. 
The actual screening program recommends that if there is a higher chance of a NIP2 result and the mother and the pregnant woman want a definitive diagnosis, that an invasive diagnostic test is required to confirm if the baby has Downs, Edwards or Pateau syndrome. In summary, and what I haven't said is detection rates are really high uh, for the use of NIPT, particularly for trisomy 21 or Down syndrome. The evaluation and the piloting um, in the use of NIPT um, showed that there were fewer invasive diagnostic procedures um, in using this technology. Um, it serves as increased information for women who want further testing if they've been deemed to have a higher chance following quadruple testing, for example. And the benefits to the NHS includes uh, the potential for cost effectiveness, and that was part of the evaluation that occurred prior to, to its recommendation to take it forward. So Public Health England, and particularly the Fetal Anomaly Screening Programme, are implementing and facilitating training uh, for healthcare professionals and this is largely aimed for example at community midwives. So it's really important that uh, when healthcare professionals offer this screening um, that women are given balanced information um, upon which to make informed choices regarding screening. It's also really important that there's equity of access so that we reduce inequalities in terms of testing across the country. So the next part of the talk, I just want to talk about um, accessing private testing and, and its potential implications. So let's consider this scenario uh, where Anna, who's pregnant, has been booked in with a community midwife and she's consented to first trimester ultrasound scan and combined screening. However, she decides that she would like to have NIPT done privately and so she had that done at 10 weeks. Her result came in and it was a lower chance result, but she still wished to have first trimester combined screening beyond that. So her appointment for first trimester combined screening um, is in progress. So here, women who opt to have combined or quadruple screening following a lower chance result from, prime, from private NIPT could be referred for discussion, um, either to obstetrics or fetal medicine. Um, but um, they are entitled to have NHS screening if they've been found to have a lower chance NIP2 result. This is in contrast to women who receive a higher chance NIP2 result as a result of private NIP2 testing because they will not be offered invasive prenatal diagnosis as part of the NHS screening pathway. So these women fall outside of the remit of the NHS screening program and they must be referred on to appropriate clinicians or obstetricians or fetal medicine specialists for a discussion about what happens next. So here, this is a woman who's accessed private testing and there are um, more and more commercial companies um, who will now be offering um, testing which um, includes a whole gamut of different types of um, clinical conditions. So for the individual undergoing um, such testing, they may feel it offers more information or may allow earlier intervention. Um, and they may feel they have more personal control. Um, there is the possibility of saving um, NHS and public health resources if testing and treatment is conducted privately. And perhaps the individuals concerned who are accessing these testings may feel it's important to relatives and other family members for them to get their testing done in this way. Um, this is just a um, um, screen capture of the types of results um, around clinical conditions that people may access commercially. Um, and so on the left column highlights the clinical con conditions and on the right there's a rating together with um, a message about um, whether any variants have been identified uh, which may signify um, the individual having this test um, at particular risk. So you can see there's a whole range of particular conditions in this list, um, some of which, in which includes a risk for um, breast cancer and also includes a risk for Alzheimer's disease. So what are the potential harms of um, over-the-counter genetic or genomic profiling? Well, sometimes the test results can be unreliable and difficult to interpret. Um, there may be complacency in lifestyle if people have been deemed to be given a good genotype um, result. 
Um, learning about the risk of disease could be upsetting, particularly if no treatments are available. Um, there is the potential for misuse of information and there may be unnecessary further tests or advice um, that, that um, people may access um, through, through this testing. So in summary, um, there is a current ongoing evaluation of NIPT um, through the National Screening Improved National um, Health Service Antenatal Pathway. Um, private testing may mean women are not managed with the NHS screening program, and I think these women may end up coming back to see us in primary care um, for advice and further referral. Um, and I think it does serve as a good exemplar of how genomic medicine and genomic technology could be applied for use. Thank you very much. Thank you, Imran. So we do have a question for you that's come through from the audience. If a woman has a high risk with a triple test, but then has a low chance with a NIPTI test, how should she be counselled about proceeding? So the NIPTI test is is not a one or all test. So it's a test that's only in in um, in use with all the other information that's coming forward. Um, so I would suggest that uh, this woman obviously needs to talk to um, the uh, midwife or the screening program liaison um, team, and it's likely that um, based on that risk um, that she would likely proceed to CVS or further testing, or be at least given the option for further testing. Because, uh, sorry, I should say, um, there is a detection rate um, of um, false negatives and false positives, so we need to bear that in mind. Yeah. Thank you. Um, there's another question as well. Do you hope that NIPTI will be part of the NHS screening programme in the future? Uh, well, well, that's certainly the plan. So the programme is being implemented through 2018. Uh, for the use of NIPTI through the NHS, um, but it will be closely evaluated, in particular looking for detection rates, looking for number of um, invasive procedures, um, and also the health economics around it as well. I think one final question for this, and for this section. Someone has asked, why is CVS confirmation needed after NIPTI if NIPTI directly analyses fetal DNA? Because the fetal DNA gives you added information on top of it, so it's a contingent test. It's a test that's done um, with the other combined or quadruple testing. It's not a diagnostic test, and the CVS allows you to, to have that further level of diagnostics. Yeah, it's, a, it's an important point for clarification, I think, isn't it? Yes, it's not a diagnostic test. NIPTI is still a screening test, even though it does refine information further. Is that, have I understood exactly. that? Exactly, yes. Thank you very much, Imran. Thank you.